So today's video is going to be, I think, a work week in my life. I'm going to try to span this over a few days of this week, but it is mid-September, so we are we're about to begin fourth quarter. We're at the end of third quarter. So I've been working on some new projects the past couple of weeks, and I think I tried to start this video a little over a week ago explaining some of the things that I've been working on, but I am now supporting sales a little bit. So I have to get versed on all of the different sales terminology. Oh, excuse me. So I need to become well versed on sales terminology, what the different metrics are for sales. And there are a lot that there's a lot out there and there's a lot I still don't understand. There's a lot of different um, metrics that our director wants us to report out on um, for the month of August that I'm just like, like if I feel like they're speaking Spanish to me, I don't understand half the stuff that people are saying to me. So I'm trying to get an understanding of all of the different sales metrics that we have. And there's a difference between like online sales and there's a difference in retail sales. Like it's just a lot. So that's what I've been working on. And I've been looking for a lot of the data because the data that they want us to use, like, so for sales, our finance team is the one that produces a lot of the report. So I'm taking a lot of, I'm going in and getting access to a lot of the finance dashboards that our finance team has created because they measure things differently than other teams may. So our director wants us to use the finance metrics, the finance dashboards when we do our analytics. So that's what I've been doing. And there's one specific metric that I haven't been able to find yet that I need to find, see if it's in a dashboard somewhere and get access to that from our finance team. They've been really good about like approving my requests and getting me access to them. It's just like, you don't know what you don't know. Like, I don't know what's out there. So I can't really report out on anything and like say, but well, I don't know what I don't have access to because I'm like completely clueless. This is new for me. So that's what I've been working on. That's what I need to do some analytics on. I've been working on compiling a spreadsheet that has the links to the different dashboards and the metrics that are housed in each of those dashboards so that this will be easier for me to do in the future. Now, typically like in data analytics, I'll say we usually want to go and get our own data to manipulate it in a way that is usable for what I need. However, in this case, we don't have access to finance data. There are very specific reasons why we don't have, so we have to rely on other people's dashboards. So totally understandable, totally fine with that. It's just that you have to go to a lot of different dashboards because they were built and customized for someone else's specific needs. And I, I know I've said this before and I'm gonna continue to repeat it because this is just how it works. When you request a dashboard, or when someone requests to have a dashboard, it is built for that specific use case or business case, whatever the needs may be. So you may find some of the data that you need within a dashboard, that, but that doesn't mean that everything you need is gonna be housed in that dashboard. Same for tables. Like when you go to query a database in a specific table, it may not have everything you need. That's how these dashboards are as well. Very specific use cases. So you have to go everywhere to get the data that you need. So what I'm trying to do is to look at performance. Like how did we perform in the month of August? Compare that to how we're doing month to date in the month of September. So far, I'm seeing that we have a slight improvement, but we also have targets. So I need to measure how we are doing against our target and see like what, you know, kind of to determine our ROI. So return on investment. So we are paying this much, like this is our cost. How much are we bringing in? What's our return on investment? I need to measure that for certain different metrics. And then also I need to do a year over year comparison, a month over month comparison, a quarterly comparison, just to see if there's any differences. And then I may have to go down at like the hierarchy level, like there's different markets and territories. Like y'all, this is all new to me. So we just gonna think of it like a house. Like we may have to start at the top 
and work our way down to see if performance is improvement. Like if there's any outliers, for example, let's say you have a specific, um, let's say if I am Target and I have Targets across the United States and I want to compare different markets, you know, like you have your Northeast, you have your Southeast, you have like your Midwest, your West, like let's say I want to compare the stores in each market to see how they're doing against one another. Then, okay, if I'm looking at once I can do that comparison to see are they kind of like in the range of one another's performance when it comes to sales. And if so, I may want to pick my lowest performing market, kind of break it down a little bit more to see, okay, within that market, are there stores that aren't bringing in as many sales? If so, is there a reason why? Did something happen? We're running into fourth quarter. So so typically during the fourth quarter, companies, you know, get out of the red, go into the black. So that's really a busy time for sales so things should improve there but you also want to do an analysis to compare it you know to last year's performance are we doing better like are we projected to do better like what commitments have we made to wall street because <laughs> i promise you like for example take apple who just announced like or just launched the iphone or released i don't know release the iPhone 15. That is a very strategic move, you know, like they are going to benefit from that in their third quarter results as well as their fourth quarter results. Like that announcement and release is not by mistake them doing it in the month of September. Like they will see a boost in sales in third quarter to end the quarter strong and then they will start out the gate in fourth quarter really, really strong. Just something like Companies that are publicly traded have commitments that they've made to Wall Street on what their performance is going to be. And please believe they will pull out all the stops to hit those numbers because it impacts their stock price. So, yeah. But anyways, I'm rambling on here. I need to get back to working on finding this data. So I'll continue to check out check in with you guys throughout the week. Okay, good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday now, so let's catch up. I didn't film anything yesterday, but what happened is I got a request um, for this sales readout data that I need to gather and um, analyze and pre like um, do a presentation on. My director, he wants to he wants for us to do a um a bell curve to show employee performance results so i've done a bell curve in excel before where you you know you do the calculation for the mean the standard deviation the normal distribution i've done it in excel before but i've never done it in tableau so what i've been what i did yesterday was i was um what I've been doing is looking up articles and YouTube videos and all these things to try and figure out how to do a bell curve in Tableau. And it seems at the time, at right, like right now, it feels very complicated to do because I don't know how to do it. So yeah, I know that Tableau has like a histogram, but that's not what I need. So I'm still trying to work on it and figure it out. And one of the problems that I have with um, like some of the YouTube videos that I've come across with the whole histogram or um, I'm sorry, with the bell curve and how to perform it. Like they will, some people will do the different calculated fields and like create parameters, create um, calculated fields in Tableau. And they're giving you the different formulas to do it, but they're not explaining the why, like why does this work? Like, what is this doing? So I'm trying to find something that I can understand so that I can recreate it for my needs because what I'm seeing so far, it doesn't make sense. And there's not a lot of videos on it. So yeah, I, I don't know. Like if I figure it out, <laughs> I will probably do a video on it if I can explain, like if I can talk to it, like to some of it. There was one video I watched yesterday that was like 45 minutes and the guy he did 
the bell curve and explain how like it's just small different lines that's being created and there was only maybe one or two parts of it he said he doesn't know why it works but it works but he was able to clearly explain like what the other parts were doing i just haven't I may go back to that video. I just haven't figured out how I can use that for what I need because he was just using, he wasn't using any real data. He was just using generic numbers. And I'm just like, that isn't computing for me, you know, like how I can use what you did with what I have. Because again, certain parts weren't explained. So I don't have a clear understanding of, okay, why you did X, Y, and Z and how that applies to what I'm doing. So that's what I'm going to be working on this morning is just looking and watching videos, looking up articles on how I can create this bell curve in, in a way that makes sense for me and for what I need. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to trend out or we're trying to look at like what's the normal distribution of employee sales or like sales for employees. They have quotas and we're looking at their attainment to quotas. So we need to look at that. And we're wanting to compare it month over month what that normal distribution is and what the actual results are. So that's what I need to do the bell curve for. I have um, other results that I pulled in, but this is just another way he wants to view the data in the readout because a lot of it is just, you know, just like a chart, like a, um, not a, like a text chart, I guess you would say, like a text chart. A lot of the other data is formatted like that because, you know, people like to see their numbers. Like you can trend it out in a trend line or, but some people like, they just show me the numbers. Like I just want to see the numbers. So yes, that's what I'm working on. Hold on. Okay, but yeah, that's what I'm working on this morning and getting together this so working on tableau yay okay all right so let's get to work